Okay, this is where we left off in video 11. We're now in video 12. And what we've already done is we've done some pre-flagging, which is uh, F6. It's made some interesting choices, which is an unusual given the algorithm. And now we're going to go in, we're going to choose two factors and we're going to rotate them. Right, so that is F4 on your function keys. Help if I click on this. F4 says insert two factors. So we say one and two, and it'll automatically go here into the rotation program. You can only do two at a time because it's two dimensional. And if you look, here is on the y axis, that represents factor one and here on the what we would consider the x-axis is factor two we can rotate these uh, values right by right look if you look here at the bottom it says use cursors right the left and right arrow key to rotate you're actually rotating the axes even though what you'll see is the values themselves moving and this is very much what Peter Schmalk would call an umbrella where things are kind of grouped together, right? So here I'm moving some things closer to uh, perhaps factor one. So this will this one here is one of the ones we were interested in, but we'll try to get them grouped closer. Once we're done with that, you see CR to accept changes. Again, that's carriage return. That stands for the enter key. So we hit enter. <coughs> And, oh, it doesn't look much better, right? It looks pretty ugly, so we might want to choose two factors and rotate them again. So maybe we want to actually go the other way. <clears throat> so we hit the right arrow key makes things look like they're moving left because I'm moving the axes to the right. <clears throat> we'll see what we can do maybe we'll play around a little bit here and we'll put this right on factor one and see how that works hit enter and you notice that look at that it looks very different here in our in our numbers it looks like it makes a lot more sense so we can say perform automatic pre-flagging again F6 and look at that we have something that looks like it makes a lot more sense Right, we have uh, cleaner loadings. It actually looks pretty darn groovy. The only thing I might unflag is this number seven. Right, it's 44% on factor or view one and 40, negative 41%. So it's negatively correlated with view number two. So I want to unflag that. So that's F7, manually flag. I'm going to come down here. And I notice it says over here to flag or deflag is CR. That's carriage return. So I hit enter. And now I've unflagged that. I hit the end key. And I think it looks pretty, pretty groovy. So we will now save this F8. I only care about factors one and two. So I'll say I want to fa save factor one and two. And then hit enter right I'll point out that if I had more than two fat if I really had more than two factors by moving the axes between factor one and two that would also affect factor three but it hasn't done a whole lot in this case because there's not really much of anything on factor three so we've saved our factors one and two we're ready to say bye bye f9 and just like our previous PCA with Verimax, we have to do seven, which is perform the analyses. Right? Again, we have to have flags indicated to do the analyses or it'll give us an error. Do you want to change the lines per page? The answer is no. And now I'm ready actually to go and view our files. We could do that here. But I prefer to do that by opening it in, in Notepad and saving it, in this case, with a different name than our previous file. And that is it. Next, we'll look at the list file for this particular study.